call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on this 8th day of October 2024 at 5 p.m. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, Larry Murphy if he'll lead the prayer and the pledge of the flag. Lord, we come to you tonight thanking you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, we just ask you to reach out and touch those people that are hurting in the far southern states, Lord. God, just give them strength to carry on. Lord, a lot of people's lost everything they've had. Just be with them, Lord. And God, go with us to this meeting, Lord. And if we have differences, Lord, let us be able to sit down and talk them out, Lord. And just give us strength, courage, and guidance, Lord. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before you have the minutes of the September 24th meeting and the October 2nd, 2024 special call meeting, I need a motion to, and a second to approve. We can do that and then she can make you a copy. Okay, let's do that. Uh, but let's go ahead and do the. Well, you. you have, oh, yeah. Bills, claims, payments, and transfers. I'll make a motion to approve bills, claims. Motion by Michael Sorry. McKinney. Second by Bo Ben. Is there any discussion on the bills, claims, payments, and transfers? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Close the like sign, the bills are paid. Uh, Treasurer's uh, financial report, turn in front of you. September uh, 2024 financial statement. We need to acknowledge that we got it. I make the motion we acknowledge. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second for discussion. Second by Michael McKinney. Discussion? <coughs> It's just knowledge that we got it. All in favor say aye. Aye. like sign. Motion carried. Uh, Red, will you introduce our guest? Yes, sir. This is Ray Hagelman. He's going to introduce himself and what he's just got something to say to y'all. Go okay, sounds good. Uh, Make it long. Make it long. Oh, no. Okay. No. Yeah, I, I promise no. I'll keep it longer. I, and you make it short. <laughs> Uh, Judge, Magistrates, I appreciate the opportunity to be here uh, before you. My name is Ray Hagerman. I'm the Executive Director of Muhlenberg Economic Growth Alliance. We're the Muhlenberg County uh, Economic Development Organization. Uh, I also represent, uh, because we manage all the assets of Paradise Park Industrial uh, Development Authority, the Regional Industrial Development Authority, of which Ohio County is a one-sixth share uh, member, uh, not too dissimilar to the Bluegrass Crossing. Um, we received, Paradise Park received a uh, $745,000 approval for a Kentucky Product Development Initiative Grant, which is, as you probably know, is the program that uh, counties, uh, economic development organizations, uh, uh, regional authorities like Paradise Park can apply for uh, to get infrastructure done or even to put into uh, you know, a spec building or, or things like that. So uh, it was approved last year. 
and uh, but we have to have the money uh, spent before the end of this calendar year. Um, what was projected in that Kentucky uh, Product Development Initiative grant was that we were going to need to spend about a million dollars on road work and a few other things. So the grand total was almost a million and a half. Uh, so half of that is 745, which was the grant. It requires a one-to-one -one match. Um, so what I'm asking is uh, for the court to consider making its share of in, in the investment, which works out to be about 106,164. And why that, how we came to that calculation is included in your folder. I'm not going to bore you with the details of that, but that's specifically what I'm asking for. Secondly, I wouldn't be asking for it if, uh, if I didn't have a way to pay you back for it. Uh, and give you a return on it. Um, one of the things that we are looking to do is our road development came in significantly under budget and the state is going to allow that to be reallocated to site preparation uh, for a building that is going to be most likely be an industrial development bond uh, from Muhlenberg County, could potentially be a uh, owned by Paradise Park. We're not sure how we're going to do that yet, but there's no obligation, no anything that Ohio County would have to step up to other than making this $106,000 investment. The company that we have, uh, we haven't finalized the lease on it yet, but we have gotten a preliminary estimate of what incentives are going to get from the state and um, they are ready to sign a lease as soon as we can establish exactly how much it's going to be based on uh, the bank and the bond council underwriting this industrial development bond. The company is uh, based in Indiana. Uh, they'll be moving all of their manufacturing to Muhlenberg County to Paradise Park. Uh, they, they've acquired a couple of other companies in the last six months. They will be adding them to that total as well. So the net new positions uh, there in Paradise Park are going to be 250 jobs at uh, $26 an hour. Um, there are already 53 of these individuals working in, Mule in Muhlenberg County in a different facility. They will be combined to go on this lot 12, which I've sort of outlined in, in the uh, packet that I gave you. So the bottom line is the annual payroll on those 303 people is about sixteen and a half million dollars. Well, every employee in Paradise Park is subject to a one percent occupational tax uh, that's already been approved by Muhlenberg County. But the bylaws of Paradise Park uh, in Industrial Development Authority require that that one percent occupational tax be split according to the shares of the partners. So, in other words, y'all are entitled to one sixth of that what will be $165,000 a year once the building is complete and once uh, the people move into it and uh, finish their hiring. Uh, we're signing them up to a 15-year lease. Um, in essence, $27,500 a year from that 165 dollars would belong to Ohio County. Uh, so in essence, you get your money back in <coughs> under four years but remember, you get to continue to get those checks as long as that company is there, and we will have them locked in to at least another 11 years. So it's a pretty significant return on the money during the course of that time, and that's only that deal. As other deals happen in the park, of course, y'all will get 1% share of that um, revenue, too, from occupational tax. We don't foresee that we're actually going to be needing to come back to each county and ask for them to step up to their investment going forward. We think we're going to be able to sell enough land to plow it back in for any of those development projects. So I don't expect to ever have to come back and ask you for any more money. Now, famous last words, but I don't expect that to happen. So I wouldn't be asking you for anything. Uh, to step up to the plate on unless I had a pretty good idea that we were going to get your money back to you. And so that's why I'm here. Don't require or ask that you all uh, make a decision tonight. 
but I do need to know something by the end of October so that we can go ahead and spend out uh, the money for the road and we can plow that money into the site preparation for this new company. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have on that particular matter. And I've, I've given you a lot of detail in the uh, in your folders. I've also included, um, we had Murray State do a impact study that shows what the impact uh, permanently would be for um, for Ohio County, how many jobs it estimated are to be created, how much tax revenue outside of the occupational tax would be created. Uh, and also just wanted to give you some insight into some new signage that won't come out of this money at all, but we're contemplating doing in the future uh, once funds permit. So that's, that's all I have. If anybody has any questions, feel free to, uh, to ask. Uh, if you think about something later, Please ask me or ask Rip, and he'll get in touch with me, and we'll try to clarify any any issues that you might have. Okay. Uh, I want to appoint a committee tonight to uh, do further research and come back here at the next meeting with. So, got to move pretty quickly. Uh, Michael, would you feel comfortable heading up that committee? Yes, I'd, I'd be glad to. And uh, uh, and uh, will be on, of course. So she, she didn't hear the presentation, you have to repeat it to her. Uh, and uh, and uh, if, you, if it's where you could, you're going to be very busy when they have a meeting, uh, invite Brian to. Can we have Rip, would you be available to sit in with us? Yeah, and Rip. Okay, can you write that down? Yep. Michael, you, and Rip, I'm the committee, and uh, Brian to test it to uh, mm -hmm. if he can to check in with y'all and uh, on the labor questions. Okay. He's our labor representative. I'm sure. Is that fair to say that? Kind of. I mean, I'm, I'm in the construction field, so. Yeah. So, yeah. He knows the, the that. scope of work is this going to be done by um, labor un uh, union or labor laborers? Of what the scope of work for the road for, development? For the, well, for the, the development itself. So, the, so really we're talking about two components, one being the road and then one being site prep for and ultimate construction of the building. Um, the road development, I don't know because that's already been bid out. Uh, there were about six bidders to it. We had our... Uh, engineers for the park follow that procedure and we ended up with uh, with six bidders and one winner um, who was substantially well three of them actually were substantially below what we had projected and so they're already doing that and quite honestly I, I don't know the answer to that whether or not they use uh, what kind of labor they use I do know the construction company uh, that we have signed a contract with to build the building they're based out of Columbus, Indiana, and they use almost all union labor and everything that they do. So, you know, um, do you know if they'll be using any union halls locally? Uh, I do know that they're going to be, I don't know which locals we're talking about, especially. I do know that there's at least one that operates out of uh, Union Hall in Evansville, Indiana, and some of those workers probably belong to that union. That would, that would probably be local one of But I don't know. If, they, if, they, if you could look into that, maybe get that information sure. back to Rip, that'd be helpful before the next meeting. That'd yep. Great. Sounds good. Okay. We appreciate it. Okay. And uh, uh, Rip, get you got your information. Yes. Your time. We'll get back with you. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, let's go back to the minutes before we bring Joe the out. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? Motion by Bo Ben. Second. Second by Michael McKinney. Um, any discussion, corrections, or additions? Uh, correction, Judge. I actually spoke in the number one to say all the other ones. Okay. Yeah. She got yes on that? Yeah. Okay. As amended, then. We'll make that as amended. Any more discussion? Uh, I'll 
also don't know all the parts, but okay. yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with corrections, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, minister pass. Now we're going to call on Jody Klinger to give us a brief uh, report on the festival that just ended recently. Thank you very much. Um, it was a good festival. Of course, that was the weekend that the hurricane was going through. And I stayed in contact with Charlie the whole time. And he was telling me, tell your people it's only going to last for like 30 minutes. And Saturday, we got none at all. So even though the attendance was lower and the tickets weren't as high as I wanted them, I was not discouraged because Thursday had a great crowd. And Thursday is usually one of your lowest days. Um, it was a free day for Ohio County. However, we only had 70 people from Ohio County. So the crowd was there. Uh, the, what happens is when that weather looks like that, your 300-mile radius and in just won't come because they pull up their phone and we were under an 89% rain. And, you know, I'm guilty too. Uh, Vine Grove was the week after that and it was like, I'm not going to drive that four hours and get wet. So our attendance was low, but we did have 720 people in attendance. Uh, 71 of those were Ohio County and 30 were complimentary. The rest were all buying tickets. The um, gate made over 10,000 and online made over 20,000 in sales. And even of those online sales that were purchased ahead of time, we had 10, just not even cash them in, again, due to the weather. So uh, sponsors this year were over 15,164, which was last year we only had 8,000, so that doubled in our sponsors. I was very happy with that. Uh, the museum, we had $300 bought at uh, the museum of local and people buying there. We still have to get more Ohio County businesses and things on board. After the festival, I go around and kind of ask, and the restaurants all said they had a great week. The um, dollar stores had a great week. No one really would communicate with me at Walmart, but um, they are seeing the benefits from having this event in our community. Our income settled at 48253 and our expenses were at seventy five. So we did have more expenses, so we did have another deficit again this year of 30000 And I do think the majority was we had an extremely loaded band uh, schedule to bring in the people. We had a lot of great talent. We're already selling tickets for 2025. We've sold eight tickets already for next year. And we have booked a, a tour bus coming from the Netherlands that will be coming during the festival time. Our attendance saw um, 30, 65 tickets bought after the festival opened for Thursday. Saturday was our biggest day with 151. Then Friday and Sunday even brought in uh, 40 tickets. So we did suffer a loss. But like I said, I am not disappointed. How much that was we the did loss that. total? 32000 32000 even? Uh, $32,088. I'm sorry. $32,088. So with that Thursday crowd and seeing what was coming, um, we would have had a, a very successful festival. I think we would have broke even. So we do have enough money to continue for next year. Mm -hmm. We're going to hit it hard with um, more sponsors. Like I said, the, the board was able to double sponsors this year. If we can double it again next year, we'll be sitting pretty good. So we're going to ex expand out of the immediate area, which we always have, but um, we're going to hit the surrounding areas a little bit heavier. So a lot of people like to compare us to Vine Grove. And when you do that, they have a, a totally free Thursday for everybody. And that day, they have some big talent. That day is completely sponsored by their businesses. Uh, the girl that does their recruiting and things, I spoke with her. And she said they even get their gas stations to give $100. She said everybody in the community. And I hate to say it, but we just don't have that support here. Um, most of our uh, sponsorship comes from out of town. Actually, um, there's a Whitesville and Philpot. Do, do they do about $3,000 for us? We do get support from Beaver Dam. 
from Beaver Dam Tourism. They sponsor all our golf carts, so that's good. And uh, we do have some support from the hospital and things like that, but we need to recruit more, so we'll be working on that. What are the dates for next year's event? September 11th through the 14th. We always try to strive for Bill's birthday. His birthday will be celebrated on Saturday. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, that's uh, that was uh, pretty good. I'm glad it's the first time I was able to stay from the first to the last. I was there for every bit of the festival all yeah. four days. And that's the first time I've ever been able to do that. We did have a pretty neat thing happen. We, um, have, we've gotten 42 states, not this year, but the year before we had Hawaii and the year before that we had Alaska. Those are the two artists to get. But we had a gentleman from Australia there this year and he was going to be in the states and he uh, researched all festivals and he chose ours to come to. So I thought that was pretty awesome. So he was there and he really had a good time. He, uh, he played music and stuff and, and so that was really good. That, he did a lot of research on where he wanted to go because he was here for two months and he picked ours. He, he was a young man. Yes, he was. And uh, some uh, girls, I say teenagers or, or young women, they approached him and talking to him and everything. He said, have you got a picture of a, of a kangaroo in the wild? <laughs> and he said, do you have a picture of a squirrel? <laughs> That's how common they were. Wow. Here, so, wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Judge, there's several here from the Beagle Club. Could we move them up uh, so they won't have to stay? Well, uh, Miss, I will have to ask the doctor to speak for them. She's here. Speak for the Beagle Club? Yeah. The old Kyle County one? This is Owensboro, Ohio County. <coughs> the other group spoke the last time. So they're not going to get to speak tonight? No, this is going to even her out. Come on out. Tell us who you are and, yes, um, and all that. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, my name is Haley Poole. I'm a veterinarian at Rough River Vet Clinic. Um, you have to bear with me. I can talk about animals and how. Is that speaker on? I can't hear. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. It was turned off. Sorry. Um, my name is Haley Poole. I'm an associate veterinarian at Ruffer Vet Clinic right here in Hartford. Um, bear with me. I, I can talk about animals and beagle hounds all day long, but I don't give too many presentations like this, so I might shake a little bit. But <laughs> um, I'm just here on behalf of Owensboro Beagle Club. I am the acting president, have been the acting president for the past two years. Uh, just wanted to kind of give our side of the story, and I appreciate the judge and the magistrates just listening, you know, to to what we've done before making a decision on, you know, what to do with this. But, um, you know, I, I grew up in Davis County, um, currently live in Warren County, uh, looking to move here soon, hopefully if I can uh, find a place that I like enough, but grew up a uh, member of Owensboro Beagle Club, me and my family, my dad and my grandpa, since I was a child. I mean, I remember coming here and I was probably like that tall, coming to Beagle Field Trials over here. Um, so I'm very familiar with park grounds, I've been running there pretty much my whole life. Um, and, you know, I know that we're having some issues with our running pen uh, right now, so we just kind of want to give up and say a little piece about it. But a little history behind our club. We've been running on the ground since 1980, I think 84. Um, we built a clubhouse, the clubhouse that you see right across the street from the Humane Society. We financed and built that all by ourselves back in 1989. And we financed and built the running pen or the enclosure that is down the gravel drive. Can you speak drive. a little closer to the mic? I'm having trouble here. There you go. Um, okay. I was just saying that we've been on the running ground since 1984 running hounds, our Beagle Club has, and that we financed and constructed our own Beagle, our own clubhouse right there across the street from the Humane Society in 89 as well as we financed and constructed the running enclosure that we have down the gravel drive um, back in 2009. Um, all in agreement with the park and all everything was met, you know, at that time. Uh, and, you know, at that time, the running enclosure with all the materials, the you know, the fence posts, the fencing, the electric fence, in 2009, we've invested about $25,000 estimated value. We have most of the receipts. 
uh, you know, hard-earned money and fundraising occurred to put up that enclosure. <laughs> that doesn't count the 15 years that it's been there, all the maintenance, all of the machinery, all of the equipment that it's taken, all the gas to put in the tractors to maintain said enclosure is all financed and maintained by Owensboro Beagle Club and its members. The county has not had been in charge of maintaining or providing any help in that manner um, since the fence's construction. Um, we also help, you know, with the park grounds outside the fence as far as rabbit habitat is concerned. We purchased the gravel used to get to our running enclosure and to the there's also a spot you can run in in the wild right in front of our enclosure um, three different times. And then we've also planted food plots in the past on the outside and also helped with a little maintenance on the outside in the past. Um, all, more details of you know where the dollars came from and where they went to are provided in the packet that was made by Mr. David Funk and his wife Becky. We're both um, great members of our club, have been long-standing members, residents of Ohio County and you know involved in the community for a very long time um and um and i was going to say personally speaking i told you i've been went in here from a, as a kid whenever i was looking at coming back from vet school i was trying to find a place where i could run my hounds and also work and there you know for me because of the beagle club there was no better spot than here um just because i've grown up you know around here at home and things like that so it is important you know to have the beagle club here because ours you know and you know all both of the beagle clubs here provide tourism they both attract you know outside inclusive people you know to see our county see what's going on out here see that it's a great place and you know get get them in here to to view everything so um it's very very important for us to continue to do so appreciate that um and then just as a, you know, on the other note, I know that this all kind of came up, you know, we have issues with the running pen, but, you know, uh, to become a member of our club, I just want to let you know, all you have to, all we ask to be a member of our club is 40 hours of work a year to help maintain the club or the fence or the enclosure. Um, we feel like that's not asking too much to put forth if you're going to, you know, become a member. If you have membership, we feel like you should be able to use the pen anytime you feel that you want to, as long as we're not having a field trial there. Um, we just ask that if you are going to use it, you help finance and maintain said running pen and enclosure. That um, sounds, sounds good to me. That's about all I have. And thank you guys for listening. Appreciate sure. it. Is there any way both sides can sit and get together and try to work something out on this? Well, that's what you just said. They can join, they can join that and help a little bit. That's all they ask for. But that's what I'm asking, Judge. Can they all get together and they, if they can join set up something? Is that all right with you guys? I mean, that, that's up to them. I, the, but uh, it is, yeah. uh, it was, like I said, put there, and it's on a small amount of the park. And many, uh, and all the rest of it is open to anybody during the season that we allow it. And so uh, that, they've, that this group has put all the effort into maintaining that little area. I think that that little area, uh, they they should uh, have first choice on it, and like she just told anybody, all anybody has to do is join that club and and pledge 40 hours a week, a work a year to help keep it up. That's all they got to do. I've got a question for Ann. I was told that they probably donated twenty thousand dollars or so to the county. Is that true, Ann? Is, do you have a? Um, I don't know the total for over the all of the years, but we do donate. You know, a dollar uh, entry, a dollar a hound, every entry that comes into our field trials, and we've had national events here before. Um, we can't have national events now because the AKC really wants two running enclosures, and I know that was brought up years ago. And you know, we, second pin is not an option, um, so we're on, no longer. AKC just doesn't want to use our site because they feel like there's more premier sites that have two enclosures for the older folks that do what we do. Um, but, you know, if we can host those big events again, we'd love to continue to give that or, you know, potentially, you know, more if we could. Um, right now we're struggling to, we, we try to maintain what we have kind of currently at the moment. My question is, for if the park receipts come in as park receipts, I can't tell where they come from. I'm sorry? 
when I get the park receipts, it's just receipts from the park. I can't tell where they come from. It don't show that it comes from the Beagle Club? They would, it would out of the park, but not what I get. How could we get that? Uh, you would have to ask to see if maybe Bob. And, and going back several years, I know one time it was a significant income. Uh, we got uh, thousands of dollars per year from I think the that court ought to be able to see that if we're getting that much money. We ought to be able to see it and see where it's going. Yeah. Well, yeah, and so I've been here several years and I haven't seen a penny. That would be up to Bob if he wanted well, to separate it out. Well, in the park receipts. Jay, could I just ask Ms. Poole a question yeah. just from a yeah. member of the audience? You mentioned that your membership would just require 40 hours. So yeah. Anybody can come to your club when you have your next meeting and pay whatever your dues are and commit to 40 hours or not a vote uh, to vote us in. You do have to be voted in um, okay. by the membership. I want to make, so I want we to have to be voted in. I want to make that clear to the court. We have to be voted in. But, uh, but they, that would happen. But, but and you would have to have a specific kind of dog to enter that pen. I just want to make that clear. I mean, I'm, just, I'm not here to argue. I just want to make sure everybody knows all sides. Uh, I would like to speak on that. Um, we have amended the rules several times, and actually three years ago, kind of right before I took this job, and just as I told the gentleman that I found running in the pen, I didn't care what type of dogs you ran or had, if you helped me maintain or help finance that pen, because I spent, I was a little hot that day, I'm not going to lie, but I just spent three days in the heat bush hogging. And the very first thing I did was find, you know, that, and it just, it, it did get the little bit of we'd be fine with that. We've just always been told we weren't going to be allowed to be a part of that club because of the vote. Because we, we do have, have the, we do vote members in, and that's just how our clubs function. Every, every one of the AKC okay. clubs function. You don't care you let us know when your next meeting is? Absolutely, you yeah. Your, uh, and I gave him my phone number. I don't know what he did with it. Um, but I did give him my phone number to contact me at that time. Okay, that sounds me like we got a compromise. Who, uh, who does the voting? All of the club, all of the club members that are that are present. That are present at the meeting. And have this? I don't know if anybody ever been turned down. Not when my presence. As long as there's not a problem with anyone, I mean, I haven't. I haven't been present for years, so I can't speak to that part. But as long as no one causes an issue, <laughs> I've never known of it. I've been there since the beginning. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda was our ordinance to our uh, uh, maintenance uh, thing that was going to help keep the grass off the road from mowing that was uh, endangering uh, motorcyclists. And uh, we really wanted to address it, but our uh, county attorney's not here, and some of the masters had some questions. And I'm sorry I couldn't get the word out quicker, but we'll, we'll take this up on the, uh, what is next meeting? Two weeks from now. <laughs> Two weeks from now, we will take it up. I'm sorry I didn't get to, couldn't get the word out to you, uh, but the, uh, some of these guys have questions for the county attorney, and he's not here. And also one of the researchers on it, uh, our matcher from the second district's not here. So we think this thing will be much better to be addressed with them both here. So that's why we, I, I, well, I'm going to ask Michael to make that motion in. I've talked about the table. Yes, yeah, I'd like to make a motion to table the ordinance for uh, second reading, the 2020-5 maintenance agreement. And uh, I need a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that it's tabled. Now then we're going to move on to something that I've spoke to most of you about, I believe. Uh, I have a... Uh, OCDA has issued a loan to... Uh, I'm digging for my paper here, sorry. I'm used to having somebody put it right in my face. There you go, thank you. And as is. Uh, but um, I talked to most of you about it. OCDA has a loan, uh, uh, and issued a loan to West Kentucky Whiskey. And they also have a loan with the bank 
uh, with uh, what's the name of the bank in this way? Anyway, Independence Bank. They also have a loan with Independence Bank of a whole lot larger number than the loan they have with us. So we're the second mortgage holder. So, and, and we have been all along. And now then, the primary loan, once got the first mortgage, is, is issuing them some more money. And therefore, we need to uh, vote again to uh, be the subordinate on that agreement. Uh, the, and, and this just allows me to sign that paper. Uh, most likely, could done it would be a problem. Just tell them that we're cool, but I thought I'd bring it to vote to the court tonight. So could I have a motion? <coughs> so that would be a motion for no change, correct? Yes, sir. Motion. Motion by Bob. <laughs> second. Second by Michael. What's this going to do with our second mortgage? It'll still be second mortgage. It's still the same. Still the same. There's no, it's just a. They're redoing their paperwork. They're, so, they're getting a third mortgage. Well, yeah, they're getting a little more money for the first that the first mortgager will have the mortgage on. Any more discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I am going to let Ann tell us about this next item. Oracle, that's the people that run our elevators. They maintain our elevators, and uh, nobody's ever got killed in one of our elevators, so they must be doing a pretty good job. Um, it hasn't been a leg broken for many years. So, uh, I'll pass somebody actually broke one. 1983 or 4. Okay, what did it fall? He said it did. This is just to renew the lease with Oracle. It's a five year lease and it automatically renews another five years unless we write them. The courthouse actually went down from about $1,200 semi annually to $870. And the community centers remains the same at $2,220 semi annually. Leg maintenance and everything. Do we have to pay extra when they make this? Uh, only if it's certain things. They cover all the basics. Yeah, they basically cover everything when they show up for an inspection that needs done. If we had to call them out in so the line. They, they the what are they out of that? Uh, I think out of Evansville. I believe that's correct. Uh, quick question. So they handle the preventive maintenance. Do you have a motion on that? Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. So moved. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Edward Brian Daniel. Any further discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Opposed carry. <coughs> Nick Woolen, front and center. Uh, this, uh, this is a bid on a dump truck so that it could be reviewed. We opened at 4 o'clock with witnesses and, uh, and uh, at least one magistrate present. And uh, we're going to read it now because, because of the uh, magistrate and, I mean, the road supervisor has reviewed it. Okay, this is a, a bid for replacement of a truck that we just recently sold. It's from Worldwide Equipment in Lexington. Um, this quote was put together by them in regards to, we're trying to see the size here. <coughs> it's a single axle truck. It's single axle. Right? Yes. And the total uh, of $152,456. And we did just receive one bid. Yes. Correct. yes, and that will be on, uh, we have an option after three years 
we can run a truck for three years and we have an option to turn it in to get a new one that guarantee it's half that money that we paid for it back on the new one. So I'll make a motion for us to go ahead and purchase this and give Ann the authority to take care of the funding. So second. Who seconded? Both. Both. Any further discussion or questions for Nick? Big none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both like that. We have a new Kenworth dump truck. All right. With the risk of only you, we used for three years for half of the money, and and the way our record goes, we'll probably get a lot more than half of it back. Yeah. Probably. Yes. Yeah. How many miles do you can put on a three-year Nick this ballpark? Uh, I would say about 15,000 a year, 15 to 20. So you're looking at, yeah, around 50, 60,000 in three years. Just one? Mm -hmm. Everything there, okay? Uh, except the begin date, which was last Sunday was... He'll be here. October sixth. That wasn't Sunday. Six. October sixth. Six. October sixth. Okay. Uh, I want to put up one hire. This is for open <coughs> position at the county park. It's part time. Level one clean uh, custodial and it's thirteen ninety nine per hour. Paisley baby. Roll call. How many hours is that judge? Twenty? Uh, it's not hardly twenty, is it? No, the custodial they do maybe eight hours a week. McKinney? Yes. Well, Bennett? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Okay, uh, now we're going to move into committee reports. And uh, Nick didn't go anywhere, did he? Right here. Okay, good, good. Harry, he's here in case of questions. But anyway, um, I'll tell you a little story and it's, it, it's progression. As you know, the General Assembly redone the Governor's Bridge Program in the last session. And uh, they changed our rules. The money stayed the same, and uh, $5 million, uh, $50 million for the state of Kentucky. And we're going to get two of them. Uh, we're going to get two of the bridges, according to what we're told by the state. The only curveball they threw us is we were not going to get a professional engineer to design it. We were going to get the company that was buying it from or ended up that's going to build it to do the engineering work. So now we've had to hire an engineer. The state people come down and talk to Nick and I, uh, and, uh, and and Miranda was in on it. And we're going to, uh, they gave us a choice of a list. You've got to hire off this list. But pretty much leaned heavily to recommend and so on. And I knew I knew the head of that uh, design department, uh, Kevin McLaren. And uh, what's the name of the company again? AEI. 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 But anyhow, we got I got signed a little agreement with them to do it. The cost will not end up, it will be our part of it. So the grant going to pay for the bridges. And these will be our last two really bad bridges in the county. So we can go out. Uh, where are they, George? Okay. That's One it. of them is on Sharif Road. You know where Coppage's feed mill is? Right by it. And the other one is on Quarter Horse Lane. You probably haven't been there. But it's only serving two houses. But it's really bad shape and dangerous and it's technically closed. And it's the only way the two houses has to get to their house. So uh, 
most likely they're using it in a dangerous condition, even though we got it marked plainly closed, and even put a barrier uh, to show that it was closed. So we want to move on them, and I need to be able to go ahead and finish up so we can get them two bridges done. You need a motion on that? Yes. So moved. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second by Brian Daniel. It's allow the judge to sign the paperwork. Got it. There's your information on the end. Yeah, there's your information. Okay. It's very easy to do the punch there. And the doctor has to sign the paperwork. It's what the main thing needs to be on there. Tell me when you got it. No more. Huh? Oh, you're good. Hey, uh, the next thing is committee reports. Has any of our. I'm sorry. All in favor say aye. Opposed like sign. Motion okay. carried. Um, is there any other committees met since we were here last? Any other committees met? I guess not. Give a report on. Uh, so we're down to master's uh, comments and requests. And Michael. I just I, Charlie's not here, but I'd like to get with Charlie and Rip and the, the others in regards to the, the upcoming landfill uh, proposal. And okay. Working on that. Yeah. We were supposed to meet. I hadn't heard back from Charlie. Yeah. Rip, can you follow up? Make sure Charlie calls that meeting. He's the chairman of it, I guess. Okay. And so Michael's on it. So. And and that's great. It, it, it is something very important we need to be working on. Our landfill contract's coming up in a couple of years and uh, our citizens are not real happy with the deal we made and we're not happy with the revenue we get from it. So, okay, anything else, Michael? I just was wondering, this is not really new business, but it's kind of is a, our special call. We didn't have made it minutes to approve tonight. We'll have those at the next meeting. No, we actually approved them. They're all together. Are they all in there? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was on the, the yeah, it was, that's, that's, that's where we changed, corrected it. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. right. I, didn't, I didn't see those folks. Yeah. All right, thank you. No further. Bob? No, no nothing at this time. Brian? Uh, I don't got anything new. Well, I think that you are and you keep being Nick up on Okay. Larry? I don't have anything back here. Uh, Landon? Uh, no, nothing, sir. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Anything from the Sheriff's Department? Not for me, Judge. Okay. Anybody from the general public have any comments or requests? How's the little one doing, Landon? Great. Right. Right. That's wonderful. We have all, all of our thoughts and prayers have been with you. We want you to know that. And now, I, <coughs> now yeah, sure. that, I do, uh, do, I do today. Today. appreciate appreciate everything, uh, all the prayers, thoughts, concerns, text calls. Uh, it, we're not out of the woods yet, but she's doing great, and she's on the right track, and we're very blessed and very thankful that uh, the doctor said it should have been a lot worse. So we're, we're definitely heading in the right direction. So I do. I, I appreciate it. My family appreciates it. Uh, we thank we thank everybody. Couldn't thank y'all enough. Rip, have you heard from Adam? No, not yet. Okay. Well, if there's no further business to come for the body, we're gonna call this meeting adjourned. Good night. Yeah.